Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, SOCE, Master's Degree Programs, Master of Science, Food Nutrition, MSCDFSM, Revised, Second Year, MFN 004 Advanced Nutrition, Unit 5 Lipids, 5.1 Introduction. If somebody discovers that you have some knowledge of nutrition, you will be promptly shooted with two questions. First, oh, you really can tell how much to eat. And second, tell me which oil to eat X or Y. In view of learning about other macronutrients in previous units on carbohydrates and proteins, let us now embark to learn more about lipids. This unit will detail on types and functions of fats and oils. Their requirements and significance in health and disease. Changing dietary patterns can sometimes lead to higher risk of some diseases. On the other hand, prudent decisions on qualitative and quantitative aspects of fat can in fact prevent the onset of certain diseases associated with contemporary lifestyles. At the end of going through this unit, you must do self-assessment and recapitulate various dimensions of knowledge pertaining to dietary fats and oils. You will acquire adequate skills and confidence to prescribe fats and oils to any community. Tips will be given to reduce fat intake from human dietaries and will come handy in counseling patients of obesity, heart diseases, diabetes and cancer. You will be able to modify fat intake of patients with fat malabsorption and liver diseases. We hope you find this unit relevant and handy. Objectives after studying this unit, you should be able to recommend necessary modifications in types and amount of dietary fat keeping in mind visible and invisible fat, fatty acid composition and effect of dietary fat on lipid profile, generate guidelines for use of fats and oils in diet and selection of dishes to avoid excessive intakes, 5 point to fats, some basic facts. Let us begin our discussion on lipids with a self-assessment exercise given. In box 5.1, box 5.1 self-assessment, did you know, 1. Fats are essential in diets to facilitate satiety, high energy intakes, and absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, and provide essential fatty acids, 2. Antioxidant requirements increase with PUFA-rich oil, 3. Vegetable oils contain no cholesterol, 4. Green leafy vegetables, some spices, and cereal pulse diet can provide linolenic acid. 5. Vegetable oils contain as many calories as animal fats. 6. Oils are rich source of PUFA and only 3 teaspoons per day are needed in an adult diet. 7. Triglycerides are the main form of fat found in diet. Diets, which provide excess calories, fat and cholesterol elevate blood lipids. 8. Excess fat in diet increases the risk of obesity heart diseases, and cancer. 9. Serum cholesterol measurements are important even before 40 years of age. The ill effects of dietary fat are initiated early in life. Lipid levels should be assessed to screen children for risk anyway, life. Lipid levels should 10. Fresh vegetables and fruits are fat-free and contain phytochemicals, which are cardioprotective. 11. Cholesterol is formed in foods of only animal origin. Animal foods also have high amount of invisible fats, rich in saturated fatty acids. 12. Fish is an excellent source of long-chain N3 fatty acids, which are cardioprotective. 13. Deep-fried snacks eaten in quick-service restaurant are likely to be rich in trans fatty acids, which increase blood cholesterol. 14. Fat present in whole milk, soya bean, Peanuts and flesh foods is called invisible fat and contribute to total fat intake substantially. 15. Exercise can improve lipid transport agents in blood. It keeps body fat low. Read about body fat in inset. If you did not know some of these facts, encircle it. Read this chapter and check again. You can score out of 15 marks yourself before and after reading this unit. Now then, are you interested in knowing about body fat? Yes, so let us proceed with our discussion. Let us begin our discussion with a review on what does it actually means to be fat or over fat or being obese. 
We have studied this concept in unit 2 earlier. Here let us revise the concept again. Body fat measurements. Obesity is best classified in adults based on body mass index. BMI classification. BMI. You already know, is a measure of body fat based on height and weight. However, in clinical practice, body fat, BF percent, measurements are also gaining importance. Body fat was always measured in sports subjects to monitor level of practice and physical fitness. Body fat is generally considered a predictor of storing unused fuels when energy intake exceeds energy expenditure. In initial stages, the net body weight may be within the normal range but body fat exceeds. However, level of body fat also depends on the level of physical inactivity, sex, age and genetic predisposition. In adults, the body fat greater than 24% and in women, greater than or equal to 27% fat is considered to be overweight over fat. However, these cutoffs are used for pure academic study rather than actually classifying obesity. Classification of obesity based on BMI and BF percent do not necessarily overlap and BMI has many more clinical correlates to risk of diseases than BF percent. Generally, BF percent per se correlates best to physical activity levels. Do you know how body fat can be measured? The conventional golden method of measuring BF percent is by underwater weighing. Difference of weight in air and in water gives density, from which the body fat is computed. As these methods limits field application, two methods have been used extensively, one, skin fold method, and two, impedance method. Let us learn about these. 1. Skin fold method. The skin fold method utilizes predication of body fat from some of three or four skin folds at biceps, triceps, subscapular, supraleac regions. Specific prediction equations for each age category and both sexes are available as presented in Table 5.1, Table 5.1, Age and Sex Adjusted Equation by Durnin and Wormersley. 1974, for calculating body fat percent, look at the screen. 2. Impedance method. This method can give entire body composition like total body water, TBW, fat-free mass, FFM, or lean body mass, LBM, fat mass, FM, and body fat, BF percent, and body mass weight, kg pound. The analyzer requires data on height and correction for weight of clothing. It computes WTHT2 to give BMI also. The principle of this method is to pass a small electric current through the body and the subject stands on electrodes as on a weighing scale. The impedance is printed with body composition analysis data. Many more methods have been used in research but these three methods, underwater weighing, skin fold method and impedance method, have been widely used. The other methods like dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, DXA, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and computed tomography, CT, are accurate and can find fat distribution. The method has a disadvantage of being expensive, involves radiation exposure, and is not suitable for field work. Having learnt about some basic facts about fats and about methods of assessing body fat, let us now study the types and significance of fats lipids in human diet. We must know the amount necessary for optimal functioning of the body. We must also know if we eat in excess than the suggested requirements, what are the implications on long-term health of the human being. These are a few issues covered in the following sections, 5.3 types of fats and its metabolism, the type of fat consumed by a person is solely dependent on, which oils the family purchases, eating out pattern, and choice of foods eaten outside or purchased and brought home to be consumed by the family, consider the following situation. In a household, say the family, four members, consumes one kg packet of ghee and two to three liters of different vegetable oils, like one liter bottle of mustard oil and five liter can of grounded sunflower oil at any given time. An adolescent boy of this family consumes one bread roll every day from canteen and up to three pastries week. 
He loves to eat basin coated fried peanuts during TV watching. Further, his father brings a lucatory while returning home from office to eat at tea time at least twice a week. Hence the boy lands up consuming 5 to 6 different sources of fats and oils. Can you tell how people's the fat stand? Well, any diet comprises of visible fat and invisible fat. Visible fats are the fats and oils used as such at the table or used for cooking. For example, vegetable oils, ghee, salad dressing, mayonnaise, butter, cream, etc. Invisible fats are present naturally as an integral component of different foods. Hence, flesh foods, whole milk, peanuts, soya bean, nuts and all seeds, spices, etc. have a high invisible fat content. Cereals contain only 2-3% to of invisible fat, but they constitute bulk of Indian diets and thus contribute significantly to overall fat intake. Visible fats can be derived from both plant and animal origin. The fats traditionally used in India are reasonably region or state-specific. Ghee is popular among all affluents and during festivals, whereas Vanaspati is consumed by lower middle class. Generally, groundnut oil is popular in western and southern parts of India, coconut oil in Kerala, rapeseed and mustard oil in north and east i.e. West Bengal, Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. Safflower oil is consumed in northern Karnataka and southern Maharashtra. New sources of oils are becoming increasingly popular like rice bran oil, palmole and soya oil. Apart from this, cotton seed oil, sesame oil, castor oil and niger seed oil is also produced in India. Solvent Extractors Association of India reported in March 2003 that the per capita availability of fats and oils is 15 to 17 g day, of which 10 to 12 g is vegetable oils, so we have just seen that a wide variety of fats oils are consumed. Do you know how these fats lipids are classified? Let us read and find it out in the following subsection. 5.3.1 Classification of Fats and Fatty Acids you must be wondering in this unit on lipids why we are talking about fats and oils and not using the term lipids. Definitely, you may also recall reading earlier in the nutritional biochemistry course in unit 2 that when we talk about fats oils, chemically we are referring to lipids. Lipids which are solid at room temperature are referred to as fats and those which are liquid are oils. Lipids are more APT when referred to all of them. However, in nutrition textbooks, fats and oils are referred in diets and lipids are referred in body fluids, like serum lipid profile. Chemically, lipids are the organic molecules poor in oxygen content, soluble in organic solvents but insoluble in water. They are classified as simple lipids, times compound lipids, derived lipids. Let us get to know each of these. Simple lipids are fatty acid esters of glycerol called triglycerols or triglycerides, for e.g. fats and oils, or higher alcohols, for e.g. waxes. Triglycerides are the major form of lipids present in human dietaries. They are the major sources of fatty acids to the body. Look up Unit 2 in the Nutritional Biochemistry course for the structure of triglycerides. Compound lipids are the simple lipids which combine with proteins, lipoproteins, carbohydrates, glycolipids, phosphates, phospholipids, etc. Derived lipids refer to fatty acids, glycerol, cholesterol and other derived compounds including fat-soluble vitamins, hormones and bile. Man can synthesize cholesterol in the body but some amount also comes from the diet. Cholesterol is present only in foods of animal origin. Nature of fatty acids present in the triglyceride determines the physicochemically physical properties and biological significance of the lipid. Triglycerides made up of saturated fatty acids are solids at room temperature and are called fats. If unsaturated fatty acids are present, they are liquid at room temperature and are called oils. What do we mean by saturated and unsaturated fatty acids? Certainly, you must be aware of this. Let us understand fatty acids in a little more detail. The fatty acids can be discussed under following heads. 
saturated and unsaturated, short chain, medium chain, and long chain, essential fatty acids. And trans fatty acids, these categories are more suitable from the nutritional standpoint of view and are not essentially exclusive. The fatty acid per se may overlap in these categories, but their applications in normal and therapeutic diets warrants this classification. For example, a dietitian prescribes medium chain triglycerides in liver disorders. On the other hand, saturated fatty acid intake should be limited in normal diets for prevention of heart diseases. So, then, let us now get to know them. Saturated fatty acids, SFA, are those fatty acids which lack double bond, example palmitic acid, 16 o'clock, stearic acid, 18 o'clock, and lauric acid, 12 o'clock. For your convenience, we have given the structure of some lipids in box 5. 2. Look up the structure of palmitic and stearic acid. Sources of SFA are animal fats, coconut oil, palm oil, and vanaspati. Refer to Table 5.2, which gives examples of SFA. Note 18 1 stands for carbon chain of 18 and 1 double bond. 9 stands for counting 9 carbons from methyl N till the double bond read as O9 on N9. Monounsaturated fatty acids, MUFA, contain a single double bond, as shown in box 5.2. The examples include palmito olic acid, 16 1, and olic acid, 18 1. Its sources are olive oil, canola oil, groundnut oil, rice bran oil, red palm oil, and sesame oil. Refer to Table 5.2. Dot, polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFA, contain more than one double bond in their structure. These double bonds can be counted from Q end or CH end. Refer to Box 5.2. 18, 29, 12 stands for linoleic acid, which is C18-steric acid derivative having two double bonds between carbon 9 and 10, as well as carbon 12 and 13. Hence, when we count from CH, end, the double bond appears at carbon number 6. We therefore also call linoleic acid as omega, minus 6, or N6, fatty acid. Linoleic acid, C18, 2, N6, and linolenic acid, 18, 3, N3, are essential fatty acids, which are not synthesized in the body. They are obtained from oils rich in PUFA content. PUFA is present mostly in vegetable oils but fish oil is particularly rich in PUFA. Table 5.2 Fats and oils and their fatty acids Other food sources Beet Bajra Black ram Cowpea Rajma Soya bean Green leafy vegetables Fenugreek and mustard seeds and fish Fish also contains C20 and C22 in 3 PUFA. Parenthesis indicates G100G of that category of fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are less than 6 carbon chain length, i smaller than caproc acid, C60. Butter contains small chain fatty acids. They are also obtained during fermentation. The PEO, medium chain fatty acids, are 6 to 10 carbon chain length. They are present in butter and coconut oil. Refer to Table 5.2. They are recommended in liver disorders due to ease in their absorption. Main lauric acid, C12, 0, and long-chain fatty acids contain more than 12 carbon chain. Lauric acid, C12, 0, and myristic acid, C14, 0, are known to be atherogenic. Palmitic acid, C16, 0, and stearic acid, C18, 0, are major fatty acids present in diet. Their derivatives are equally important. Essential fatty acids are all long-chain fatty acids. What are essential fatty acids and their roles in our body? Let us read and find out next. Essential fatty acids, EFA, there are two essential fatty acids linoleic and linolenic acid as mentioned above. Their structures are depicted in box 5.2. They are both 18 carbon compounds with more than one double bond linoleic acid, N6, C18, 29. 12-vile linolenic acid is, 
N3, C1839, 1215. The human cell cannot place double bonds between ninth carbon and methyl end hence. Omega-3, N3, and omega-6, N6, fatty acids need to be derived from the daily diets. Linoleic acid, LA, N6, can be lengthened to C20 and dehydrogenated to give arachidonic acid, A, ah, C20, 4581114. Linolenic acid, N3, ALA, can be lengthened and dehydrogenated to C20 and C20 to compounds like icosipentaenoic acid, EPA, C20, 5, and docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, C22, 6. These are known to be cardioprotective and are also present in fish oil, refer to Table 5.2. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are part of vital body structures, perform important role in immune system, formation of cell membrane, and produce hormone-like compounds called eicosanoids. These hormone-like compounds include prostacyclins, prostaglandins, thromboxanes, and leukotrienes. These compounds are potent regulators of vital body functions like blood pressure, childbirth, blood clotting, immune response, inflammatory responses, and stomach secretions. Note, aspirin is known to inhibit blood clotting because it blocks synthesis of eicosanoids. Physicians prescribe small doses of aspirin on regular basis for patients at high risk of heart attack. Next, we move on to understand what do we mean by trans fatty acids how these are produced and what are its sources. Trans fatty acids, TFA, plant-derived fats and oils contain CIS fatty acids. You may recall reading about the CIS and trans isomers in the nutritional biochemistry course. CIS and trans isomers, we learnt, have the same chemical formula but different chemical structure and properties Trans fatty acids are produced when vegetable oils are hydrogenated to make margarines, partially hydrogenated vegetable shortening and vanaspati. Hence, major sources of trans fatty acids to human diets are commercially baked products, deep fried snacks in vanaspati and mithai. Small amount of trans fatty acids are present in milk fat formed by bacterial conversion of CIS into trans fatty acids in cow stomach. Metabolically, trans fatty acids and saturated fatty acids raise blood cholesterol levels before moving on to the understanding of digestion of fats in our body. Let us review what we have learned so far. Having studied about the classification of fats above, next we shall review the digestion, absorption and transport utilization of fat in the body. 5.3 point to digestion of fats. The enzyme in human gut which is responsible for fat digestion is lipase. Lipase is secreted by both stomach and pancreas. In stomach, the dietary lipids get liquidized in presence of heat and gastric contractions. Gastric lipase can only hydrolyze 30% of triglycerides comprising short and medium chain length. Hence, the lipolytic activity of stomach is not important. Only milk fat which contains some short and medium chain fatty acids tends to be hydrolyzed. These short chain fatty acids can then get absorbed through stomach wall into portal vein. Mostly diets have fats which provide long chain fatty acids. Long chain fatty acids entirely depend on emulsification by bile in gut. The pancreatic juice and the bile are secreted together through common bile duct in the duodenum. Bile emulsifies fat into hydrophilic micelles making lipase more efficacious to act. Pancreatic lipase is specific to hydrolyze primary ester linkages at carbon position 1 and 3 of glycerol in a triglyceride. After this action, mixture of products is obtained for absorption in jejunum. The products are glycerol, fatty acids, monoacylglycerol and diacylglycerol. Phospholipases act on phospholipids giving glycerol, fatty acid, lysolecithin, etc., while cholesterol esterase acts on esterified cholesterol to give free cholesterol and fatty acids. Let us now know how after digestion these products are handled for absorption. 5.3.3 Absorption of Fats After digestion, 
Only 25% of triglycerides are broken completely to glycerol and fatty acids. Major digestion product is to monoacid glycerol. This is because lipase can hydrolyze ester linkages at the positions 1 and 3 of glycerol preferentially. The two monoacid glycerol, fatty acids, and one monoacid glycerol leave the oily phase and diffuse into micelles consisting of bile salts, lecithin, and cholesterol into the aqueous phase of intestinal lumen towards brush border of the mucosal cell. The utilization of free fatty acids is by activation of fatty acids and glycerol inside the mucosal cell to resynthesize triacylglycerol. These triacylglycerols and phospholipids, cholesterol esters, cholesterol and small amount of protein form chylomicrons. What are chylomicrons? Look up Unit 2 in the Nutritional Biochemistry course now. Yes, so you now know that chylomicrons are basically lipoprotein molecules which are water miscible. They are poured into lymphatic vessels through lactyls to reach the liver, hence long-chain fatty acids of more than 10 carbon chain, phospholipids, and cholesterol are absorbed in lymphatic vessels. Short-chain and medium-chain fatty acids are absorbed without bilemulsification into portal vein as an esterified acids. Plant sterols, fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E and K are all absorbed like long-chain fatty acids. In liver disorders, long-chain fatty acids may be replaced by medium-chain triglycerides for better tolerance and increasing energy intake. In deficiency or absence of adequate bile, long-chain triglyceride absorption may or may not be affected, hence fat is given to patients of liver disorders as per their tolerance. We will learn more about this in the Clinical and Therapeutic Nutrition course, MFN005, in Unit 15, bile itself undergoes reabsorption to be recycled 6 to 10 times a day. This is called enterohepatic circulation of bile. In patients of familial hypercholesterolemia, more bile gets reabsorbed. Look up Unit 7 in the Nutritional Biochemistry course, MFN002, to get to know more about familial hypercholesterolemia. Excretion of bile is an important route of eliminating endogenous cholesterol. As bile is derived from cholesterol inside the liver cells, the loss of bile from body would mean utilizing cholesterol for bile synthesis. Clinically, hypercholesterolemia may be treated by interrupting enterohepatic circulation of bile. Drugs can be given to prevent reabsorption of bile so that more and more endogenous cholesterol converts into bile and gets eliminated from the system. In the previous sections, we learned how fats and lipids are digested and absorbed in various forms short-chain, medium-chain and long-chain fatty acids. Let us now try to understand how these are transported and stored in our body. 5.3.4 Transport and Storage of Fats in the Body The chylomicrons circulate in blood for about 2 hours or more after the meal. They are acted upon by lipoprotein lipase giving free fatty acids, FFA, and glycerol. Muscles, adipose and other cells pick up FFA and utilize them to derive energy. Muscles derive energy but adipose cells re-esterify FFA with glycerol to store as triacylglycerol. If a body consumes more energy than expended, liver uses the carbon skeletons of protein, carbohydrate, and alcohol to synthesize lipids including cholesterol. Hence, liver is lipogenic whereas adipose cells store lipids rather than synthesizing these. Liver decides transport of lipids in aqueous phase of blood. It coats the triacylglycerols and cholesterol with proteins and phospholipid shell, similar to chylomicrons, synthesizing very low-density lipoproteins, VLDL. VLDL losses fatty acids after the action of lipoprotein lipase in blood and then its density increases. These are called intermediate-density lipoproteins, IDL, and low-density lipoproteins, LDL. LDL contains all the cholesterol present in VLDL having therefore a higher cholesterol triacylglycerol ratio rather than VLDL and IDL. LDL is therefore referred to as bad cholesterol and is strongly associated as a risk factor of heart diseases. 
LDL delivers its contents into the cell through LDL receptors. Liver contains 50 to 75 percent of LDL receptors in the body. More research is needed to validate to long-term implications. HDL-LDL ratio has been considered to be crucial in determining risk to heart disease. We will learn more about this aspect in the clinical and therapeutic course MFN005 in Unit 12. The discussion above was quite exhaustive. We hope having gone through this section and the unit on lipid metabolism in the nutritional biochemistry course, you would be quite clear about the mechanism of digestion, absorption and transport of lipids, 5.4 sources of fat in Indian diet, the total fat intake of an individual comprise of the following, a. Invisible fat present in almost every food item, b. Hidden fat in processed and ready-to-eat foods, and c. Visible fat vegetable oil, ghee, butter and vanaspati, used for cooking. A. Invisible fat. Fats is present as integral component in plant and animal foods. Edible plant foods have a low content of fat and acephase, except for nuts and all seeds, and are fairly good sources of mufas and PUFAs. In most cereals, millets, legumes and pulses, fat content ranges between 1.5 to 3%, higher contents in maj, bajra, bengal gram and soya bean. In cereals, millets and most all seeds, linoleic acid, la, is a major fatty acid whereas pulses legumes, green leafy vegetables, some all seeds, soya bean, rapeseed mustard, flaxseed seed, and fenugreek are good sources of both la and linolenic acid, ala. Animal foods, fatty dairy products like butter, ghee, whole milk, Cream, fatty cheese and fatty meats provide cholesterol, high amounts of SFAs and are a natural source of TFAs. Structural fats, lean meats, have a fairly high content of long-chain, LC, UFAS. The meats of ruminants grazed on grass and in the wild contain less fat, SFAs and higher LC in 3 PUFAs, ratio of LC in 6 PUFAs, LC in 3 PUFAs is less than 2 as compared to meats of those in captivity fed on grain-based rations. Poultry meat contains less fat and cholesterol but appreciable amounts of PUFAs including LC PUFAS. Egg has high cholesterol but is a good source of La, ALA and DHA. Fish has less fat, SFAs and cholesterol and is a good source of LC and 3 PUFAs. Fat content and relative contents of EPA and DHA vary in fish and other seafoods. B. Visible fat, present in vegetable oils, ghee, butter or any other oil used for cooking, depending on the percentage of various fatty acids, fats and oils can be grouped as oils containing I. High SFAs 2, high MUFAS 3, low, 40-70%. to 70%. La and 4, both La and Ala. Vegetable oil used in cooking is the major type of visible fat consumed, vanaspati, PHVO, and ghee are the other sources. India has a wide range of edible vegetable oils, groundnut, rapeseed mustard, sorbine, sunflower, sesame, safflower, rice bran, cottonseed, and linseed. The type of vegetable oil consumed varies from one part of the country to the other. Refer to Table 5.3 which presents the approximate fatty acid composition of dietary fats and oils consumed in India, percent of total fatty acids. The traditional rape mustard seed oils contain minus 50% erucic acid, C22-1. Concerns about possible deleterious effects of erucic acid, lipidosis and fibrosis in experimental animals in humans led to the development of low-zero erucic acid rapeseed variety and the oil is sold as canola oil. Butter, ghee, coconut oil and palm kernel oils are rich sources of short and medium-chain SFAs. Vansapti promoted as desi ghee is used largely in North India, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh as cooking medium. Table 5.3 Approximate fatty acid composition of dietary fats and oils consumed in India, percent of total fatty acids. Vegetable oils also contain minor components in the non-glyceride fraction which have specific health significance. 
The composition of non-glyceride components in dietary fats and oils is given in Table 5.4. Plant sterols and other unique components, orizinols and sesame lignans, present in the non-glyceride component of vegetable oils contribute to lowering of total and low-density lipoprotein cholesterol C, hidden fat. In most parts of the country, sweets and savory foods, commercially fried, processed, ready-to-eat, packaged, frozen, premixed foods and street foods are commonly consumed. Vansapti is used as a substitute for ghee in preparing these foods and thus constitute the hidden fat. Partial hydrogenation of vegetable oils, pH view, vansapti, bakery fats and margarines, is the main modifiable source of trans fatty acids, TFAs, in Indian diets, table 5.4, non-glyceride components in dietary fats and oils, and their health, 5.5 functions of fats and fatty acids, in above sections, we have covered types and sources of fats and fatty acids. We have also understood how it is digested, absorbed and transported. Let us now know its routes of utilization and why body needs fats fatty acid. Fats contribute to texture, flavor, taste and increases palatability of the diet. They provide an effective medium of heat transfer in deep frying and transfer of flavors from Indian spices. 2. Fatty acids are used for generation of cellular energy. It has highest heat energy density of 9 kg. It is the major storage form of energy in body requiring least space and minimum water of hydration as compared to protein in muscle or glycogen. Adipose cells are 80% lipid and only 20% water and protein. In children's diet, cereals and pulses make their diet bulky. Fats are concentrated sources of energy. In adult's diet, Use of visible fats should be minimum. Excessive fat intake is not recommended in any age, including children. The following section will detail on visible fat requirements, keeping in mind the invisible fat contents of Indian diets in all age group. 3. Fats are essential for meeting nutritional needs of essential fatty acids like linoleic acid, N6, LA, and alpha-linolenic acid, N3, ALA. These fatty acids are used for biosynthesis of eicosanoids, membrane lipids, and lipid mediators. They are essential for development of central nervous system and modulate lipoprotein metabolism. Let us look at these functions. A. Modulation of membrane structure and functions. As the integral components of cell membranes, fatty acids affect membrane fluidity and lipid protein interactions which alter activity of membrane related transport systems ion channels membrane bound enzymes cellular receptors for hormones and neurotransmitters iron epa of membrane phospholipids also give rise to an array of potent bioactive eicosanoids thromboxanes prostacyclins and leukotrienes eicosanoids derived from a have strong proinflammatory progregatory and vasoconstricting effects as compared to the opposing or weak effects of eicosanoids derived from EPA. PUFAS of N6 and N3 series and their metabolic products regulate production of lipid cellular mediators have potent anti-inflammatory effects and neuroprotective effects. B. Role of R and DHA in fetal and infant early growth and development during the fetal and early infant development there is a rapid accretion of arachidonic acid, A, uh, and docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, in infant brain, DHA in retina and A uh, in the whole body for meeting the demands of rapidly growing tissues organs. Small amounts of DHA are also present in cell membranes throughout the body. A uh, and DHA have different and specific roles in neural and behavioral functions. DHA is crucial for the function of rhodopsin for vision and postsynaptic receptors for neurotransmission. The fetus depends completely on the maternal source of LA, ALA, A and DHA, maternal tissues stores and dietary intake. An infant obtains these PUFAs through breast milk. C. Role of dietary fatty acids in preventing coronary heart disease, CHD, and other diet-related non-communicable diseases, DRNCD. Recent studies have shown that replacement of SFAs with PUFAs, LA, ALA, LC, and 3 PUFAs 
lower the risk of CHD and CHD events compared to higher fat intakes, diets low in fat with high carbohydrate result in a metabolic pattern that increases the risk of type 2 diabetes and CHD. The LCN3PUFA provided from fish and other seafoods lower serum triglycerides, postprandial lipemia, and have beneficial effects on endothelial function, inflammation, vascular reactivity, and ventricular arrhythmias. A strong inverse relationship is documented between fish or LCN3PUFA intake and CHD and some types of cancers. 4. Fats promote absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A. D, E and K patients of cystic fibrosis often absorb fat poorly and are at risk for fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. Water miscible preparations of these vitamins are therefore prescribed. Patients who are given mineral oil laxatives are at risk of fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. The mineral oils carry these vitamins into large intestine which are lost in stool. Such laxatives should not be given at mealtime or for long periods. 5. Fat intake ensures satiety. It imparts feeling of fullness and satisfaction and thus delays onset of hunger. In low-fat diets, satiety can be ensured by high fiber and fluid intake. 6. Fats along with proteins constitute structural components of cell membrane and some body fluids. Lipoproteins also have an important role in transport of lipids in blood. 7. Fats serve as thermal insulator in the subcutaneous tissues and certain organs. Some lipids act as electrical insulators allowing rapid propagation of depolarization waves along the myelinated nerves. The fat content of the nervous tissues is particularly high. Vitamin E, carotenoids, sesame lignans, Orizinols and polyphenols have antioxidant effects. Hypocholesterolemic and antioxidant effects of a combination of non glyceride components are greater than their individual effects. Increasing plant sterols and other non glyceride components from natural plant foods and vegetable oils could therefore provide an additional dietary means for prevention and correction of dyslipidemia and increasing antioxidant potential of human diets. Unsaturated fats are susceptible to oxidation and rancidity. Most oils have natural antioxidants, but food manufacturers have an option to add synthetic antioxidants like butylated hydroxynizole, BHA, and butylated hydroxyl toluene, BHT, to prevent rancidity. One thing is for sure that vitamin E requirements of man are linked to PUFA intake. ICMR recommends vitamin E tocopherol at 0.8 mg per GPUFA intake before we move on to our next section on nutritional requirements of fats and oils let us recapitulate whatever we learned till now 5.6 nutritional requirements of fats and oils as with the other micronutrients we do compute requirement of visible fat too for all age groups and give guidelines for selection of fats for this we must consider total fat intake which include both visible fat and invisible fat in food. The total fat intake in the Indian population is income dependent and therefore highly skewed, the intake being low among rural and urban poor income groups. Diet surveys by the National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau show that daily intake of visible fats in rural India range 6 22 g, median 13 g consumption unit, and the diets of the rural population, including children pregnant and lactating women, provide 20% linoleic acid. Similarly, linoleic acid requirement during lactation rise to 5.7 n% 5.6.3 infancy, infants, 0 to 6 meters the recommended method of feeding healthy infants is breast milk. The fat content of human milk is relatively constant at 3 to 4% by weight and delivers 50 to 60% e adequate breastfeeding ensure 30 g fat intake by infants of which 10% is linoleic acid and 1% linolenic acid breast milk thus meets efa needs of infants of 6 n% human milk substitutes infant formulas should have fat and individual fatty acid contents including R and DHA, similar to the levels in human milk. 
preterm infants have a higher requirement for R and DHA to allow rapid brain and body growth. Infants 6 to 24 meters from age 6 months to 2 years, fat intake should be reduced gradually, depending on the physical activity of the child, to 35% E. The mix of fat from breast milk and complementary foods should provide infants with at least 3-4.5% E from LA and 0.4-0.6% to E from alpha-linoleic acid, ALA. In situations where breast milk intake is low, the level of fat, LA and ALA in complementary foods should be increased so as to achieve the recommended intakes. To provide optimal energy density and adequate calories, Young preschool children's diet should carry enough fat. Assuming 10% E fat from breast milk and infant formula plus fat from complementary foods, except visible fat. 25G visible fat is recommended in diets of young children, table 5.3, 5.6.4 children and adolescents, 2 to 17Y, total fat intake below 25% E is considered to affect growth in children and adolescents. To provide 25% total fat calories, the minimum level of visible fat in children and adolescents should range between 25 to 30 and 35-50 G day respectively, table 5.3. Since the requirement of fatty acids for adolescents has not been adequately established, the recommendations for this age group are said to be the same as in adults. 5.6.5 choice of cooking medium in the context of N3 and N6 fatty acid ratio in Indian diets, a cooking medium should meet EFA needs. Some EFA will come from invisible fat. Selecting an oil with at least 20% linoleic acid is not the only criteria. ICMR 1998 has given dietary guidelines to maintain N6 N3 ratio of 5 10, 1, which ensures long term health. However, most oils are rich in linoleic acid, N6. Consumption of PUFA rich oils lead to a very high ratio. Excess N6 impairs desaturation and elongation of linolenic acid to EPA and DHA, which is best avoided. It is, therefore, Important to promote linolenic acid, N3, intake to balance the ratio. For ensuring the appropriate balance of fatty acids in cereal-based diets and in the diets of those who do not eat fish and are primarily vegetarians like in the case of many Indian diets, we need to depend on plant foods rich in linolenic acid. WHO FAO Expert Group on Diet Nutrition and prevention of chronic diseases endorsed that qualitative composition of fats in the diet has a significant role to play in modifying risk factors of CVD and set the following ranges for population nutrient goals, percent E, total fat, 15 to 30, at least 20% E is consistent with good health, comma, SFAs.